In today's video, we are gonna be making an all vegan version of one of my Norwegian family Christmas recipes. This is my absolute favorite side dish to have around the holidays, and I can't wait to show you how to make a vegan version of Norwegian soda cola. like a sauerkraut recipe and if you've had sauerkraut in the past this is probably going to be a little bit different than what you're expecting when I think of sauerkraut I usually think of something that is intensely acidic and it has lots of big bold flavors and it's cold and crunchy and usually something that you put on top of hot dogs or sausages this is really not that this is something else entirely but it is so delicious and something that we had as a side dish every single Christmas growing up. It works really well with kind of hearty comfort food, wintery flavors, like we usually served it with a roast with gravy and some potatoes, some veggies, and then some lingonberry sauce, which is kind of like a Scandinavian style cranberry sauce. So if you have kind of like a meat and potatoes vibe going on on the table, this would work really well. So when I went vegan, I, of course I wanted to still have that same flavor experience, but without the animal products. And it took me a while to figure out how to get the taste and the texture just right, I finally did and I'm so excited to share it with you. This sauerkraut is actually served warm and it gets its flavor from caraway seeds. If you've never cooked with caraway seeds, you can find them in the spice section just at your regular grocery store. And basically caraway is the flavor that you get when you bite into rye bread. So like rye sandwich style bread that you would find at the bakery. If you like the taste of rye bread, you would love this recipe because they pretty much have that same flavor profile. But this is a side dish that really only has a handful of ingredients. It's super easy to make and very budget friendly as well. So I'm so excited to share my Norwegian family recipe with you. If you want to see more veganized Norwegian style recipes, then give this video a thumbs up so I know that you're excited about this. Hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to my channel and check out the link in the description box below. That is where you'll find a recipe for my friend Malcolm's veganized sweet potato pie. He and I are both going to be making vegan family recipes. If you don't follow Malcolm, he is basically a Instagram and YouTuber and he makes amazing vegan content. I will link his Instagram and YouTube in the description box below so you can check it out after watching this video. And with all of that said, let's go ahead and get cooking. All right, so sudkal in Norwegian actually just means sour cabbage. And so for this, we are going to need a average size green cabbage. And I like to trim off the stem and cut this into wedges. And as you can see, it has lots of layers already. So a lot of the chopping is already gonna be done for us. I just like to use my knife to remove the core and then I will turn the wedge on its side and rock my knife back and forth on the cutting board to create kind of like a really thin confetti. Now, if you have a food processor, you can just throw this in there and this will be done in a matter of seconds, but you don't need to have any fancy equipment to make this, just a regular chopping board and knife will do ya. And so what I like to do is just kind of anchor my knife on the cutting board. I don't pick it up. I just make sure the point is steady and then I will lift it up and kind of rock back and forth to create this really thin, nice confetti-like shredded cabbage. The same exact consistency that you would use for coleslaw. As I'm watching this back, I'm having memories of doing this with my grandma and I would always get impatient and cut it really thick and she would always tell me I needed to do a little thinner. So my grandma would say, make sure it's nice and thin. Now I'm gonna just go ahead and add a little bit of olive oil to a large pot and add in my cabbage. Olive oil is not traditional, but my grandma used to add the pan drippings from the roast into the pot for flavor, for a little bit of umami, savory flavor. And so to mimic that, I'm gonna use some veggie broth and a little bit of olive oil. Then I'm gonna add lots of flavor to the cabbage with some salt, and this is also gonna work to draw out some of the moisture in the cabbage, and this will create a really delicious sauce. I'm gonna balance all the flavors with a little bit of sugar. This isn't gonna make it sweet, but it's gonna kind of help to counter the bitterness in the cabbage and also that bright acidity from the vinegar. Finally, I'm just gonna sprinkle in some caraway seeds and this is going to cook and become really soft, so don't worry, they're not gonna be like crunchy in the finished product. And finally, I'm just gonna add a little bit of vinegar. Now in Norway, they have a concentrated vinegar that is traditionally used, but since I can't get that in the States, I just use a little bit more regular white rice vinegar and it works really well. I'm just gonna stir this all together, 
bring it to a boil, and then I will cover it, lower the heat, and let this simmer for about two hours. Now, this was honestly the kind of thing that my grandma would do in the morning on Christmas Eve and just let it simmer away all day. It just gets better and better. And for that reason, it's actually a really great meal prep item. And I love meal prepping on holidays because it makes actual holiday dinners so stress-free and easy. So you can make a big batch of this one, two, even three days ahead of time and then just warm it up. It is very brothy and kind of saucy. So what I like to do is serve it with a slotted spoon and it has the most delicious kind of savory, delicate crunch. It has that kind of earthiness from the caraway seeds. And this to me just tastes like Christmas. To be honest, I really wish my grandma was around so I could make her some of this and see what she thinks because I really think I nailed it. I think it tastes just like hers and I feel like she would be really proud of me. So every time I have this, I think of her, even when I'm making it the whole process of, you know, creating this dish, it reminds me of cooking with her and being in the kitchen with her around the holidays. And I think that's what's so cool about food. It's so much more than just, you know, sustenance. It really can be something that is a way to connect with the people that you love and create Great memories and traditions like this recipe is for me. If you have ever veganized one of your family recipes, I would love to hear about it because sometimes veganizing something can be really easy and pretty straightforward, and other times it takes a lot of trial and error to get those flavors and textures just right. And so when you finally nail it, you can be just over the moon excited. I know I personally kind of feel like a scientist when I'm like, oh, I finally figured out the ratios and exactly what I needed, but without animal products. And you just get so excited to have that same flavor experience, that same comforting, delicious, food that you grew up with, but without involving animals. So I would love to hear about your success stories or any funny instances that you may have come up with when you were trying to veganize a family recipe. Leave that in the description box below. I can't wait to read all about it. If you want this recipe, check out the description box. That is also where you will find Malcolm's sweet potato pie recipe. Head over to his channel, let him know I sent you, and I hope you guys have a great day and a happy holiday season, and I will see you in a video very soon. Bye.